In this video, I'm going to go ahead and provide you with a example of a conventionally framed floor. This would be a floor with floor joists, plywood sheathing or oriented strand board OSB sheathing. And of course the sheathing needs to be staggered as you notice here. I believe the minimum is one bay this, that they need to stagger but that uh, that might vary. Um, four by eight sheets, four foot this way, eight foot this way. If you lay out your joist correctly you should be able to joist it straight through and stagger everything and come up with something like this. That's what it would look like without the sheathing. That's what it would look like without the joists. Sill plates, beams, piers, hangers, and this is all, this area here, it's, uh, I've seen it built uh, different ways. So you could end up with a hanger like this. You could end up with a pocket in the stem wall. It all it all depends. This I've just seen it framed uh, too many too many different ways. So I would imagine you're not going to see pockets in the stem walls anymore. They weaken the stem wall. That's kind of a thing of the past. There's a lot of things that we did a long time ago that we probably will never do. And this is a pier, and this is usually. Um, a square, you, it, this, these come in a variety of different shapes too. Most of the time they want to have a solid concrete pier with a footing underneath it. They don't want you to use the piers that uh, you go down to your local home improvement center and purchase. Those are, those are kind of a thing of the past also used on those. And you think, well, what do they do with them? Why are they selling them? Well, I think they sell them for patios or something like that. People get them and uh, don't get a permit and end up with those things. So obviously they wouldn't be in the store if, they're, if they weren't being sold. So this is a basic layout of a conventionally framed floor. You're going to have beams and then you are going to have sill plates. This would be treated lumber most of the time. I have seen it in redwood, and I believe you, that's still an option. I believe you can still use redwood or uh, treated lumber for the sill plates. The beams can all be standard, conventional, um, standard uh, construction, standard lumber. And you need to make sure that uh, they are engineered and sized by an engineer, I should say, all of this stuff. I mean, you go in and you go, hey, my friend had a 4x8. I'm putting a 4x8 in here. Well, that's not going to work all the time. This is what it looks like, again, with the joists. The joists usually lap. Sometimes they do butt. They will actually butt each other. Um, you'll have the joists line up all the way across. They won't stagger like this or lap. But this is the preferred method. This way you can nail into the other joist and get a nice tie, a nice connection going all the way through from one end of the building to the other. Now I don't have any blocks in here, but it's going to be a, uh, you're going to need blocks in between each joist. And I believe the blocks are supposed to be spaced every 10 feet. If you had a spot where let's just say this was from beam to beam was 14 feet then you might need to run a row of blocks down the center also so again that would be that's another common construction practice let's go back down to here where the lap is and take off down the beam here like i said these this would have these are i believe 10 foot joists you would have one block I'm running down the row on top of the beams and that would be enough for this particular situation. Um, the joist sizes are going to be, they're going to vary. I hate to say older homes, usually this was common, 2x6, 2x8, something like that. Uh, but now they're starting to get into bigger sizes and of course the truss joist, the engineered uh, joist. Uh, the corner of the rim would just butt the other rim. And a lot of times this is just going to end nail. You're going to nail 
Um, for a two by six or a two by eight, you're going to use three 16D nails to end nail, and you're also going to need the toenail into the plates, also. So the sill plates will need toenails, and the rim will actually toenail into the plates, also. So you would drive a nail from the outside into uh, you would drive a nail here down. And uh, I would imagine they would be about every 24 inches on center, but that might be something for an engineer to provide you with. Again, remember this is just a basic example. Uh, pretty straightforward, conventionally framed floor, and it's sheathing.